Felicia Donnelly is our speaker today. She is the Assistant City Manager and Economic Development Director for the City of Oldsmar, and effective January 1, she will be our new City Manager. Um, Mayor Seidel is here, um, so I'm sure he will be providing some input, but with that, our topic today is kind of the downtown redevelopment area and uh, where we are and where we might be in a year or uh, or more and what we envision downtown. So with that, I don't see you, Felicia, but I'm sure we'll hear you. So I know that um, most of you have heard that we are, you know, in the process of, of building a downtown. So um, it's been the council vision for many years. The city has been working on downtown development for about 20 years. And really the purpose is to <coughs> an identifiable um, walking pedestrian vibrant downtown along State Street and St. Petersburg Drive. So um, just to give you all some context, the original State Street, there's a photograph of it. It, it was vibrant at one time, um, but that was short lived. And so we've always wanted to develop a functional and attractive space. Um, we've worked on many, many complex um, concept plans and then for, to really to activate a downtown, you need a mix of uses. So you have to have residential, commercial, retail um, you, to create that synergy. So as I said, the city's been working on this for many years. The city designated um, a CRA in 1994. And a CRA, for those of you who don't know, is a community redevelopment area and it's really a, a tax district to, um, to redevelop and prevent blight issues. So um, in 1994, we developed a CRA, and then with that, we developed a CRA plan. Um, through, through those efforts, there's been many public improvements downtown. We've put in um, new water main, new streetscape. The building that the chamber's in is one of those CRA efforts. So we redeveloped the bank building into the now it's the, the council chamber and the um, upper Tam Tampa Bay Chamber of Commerce building. Um, we built a new library at the corner of um, state or at St. Petersburg Drive. Um, we acquired um, about 15 acres of land and we've been giving grants out for businesses and residential grants um, every, to help with redevelopment. Since 2001, I went back, I counted um, 82 public agenda items on the subject and about 26 of those have occurred since 2019. Just to give context to how long that the city's been working on this. This is a map. Are you all familiar with this map? Yes, okay. Yes. So, so the light blue areas are the city owned properties. So if on the top left is city hall and you know across the street is, is the chamber building. And you can see we've acquired that, we own that whole parcel. It's about eight acres um, along Tampa Road 580 and State Street. And if you go down the street, you guys can see my cursor maybe? Yep. Yeah, hey, Felicia, just Felicia, so you know, uh, the way that the PowerPoint, you have it set, it's, it's showing the next slides as well. So the main slide is reduced in oh. size. I don't, I don't know if you want to change that. Um, full screen, full screen. Oh, okay. That's okay. It, we, I'm we just going to leave it like it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't, don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> um, okay. So, all right. So then we also own this, this blue block down by the public library. That's about seven acres. So you can see where we're creating this downtown between St. Petersburg Drive, which kind of loops back up to 580 along St. Petersburg Drive, and then State Street and this whole area is sort of is the creation of the downtown. So again, our downtown redevelopment areas, I'm gonna focus on two sites. I'm gonna call it the City Hall site. That's the site right next to City Hall and the library site. Felicia, so, a question, is, is that whole area that's between 580 and, and uh, St. Petersburg Drive, is that all CRA district? Yes, that's the entire CRA. Well, it's not the entire, but it's all in the CRA. Yeah, okay. 
Can you all please ask questions as I'm going? You don't have to wait until the end. Um, so other downtown redevelopment efforts, just for the site next door, we've had several plan iterations, all with public input, and some of them have included the, an old square, we've called it everything, an REO station, Park Plaza, Market Square. We had USF come in, 19, six, and, um, and in 2016 to help us create a CRA master plan. We had a town center plan, and most recently an Oldsmar town center sketch. And so we've, we've done several RFPs um, throughout the years to get developers interested in the site. And so we've at least had, I wanna say about four or five instances of trying to get a developer in, um, interested. The last one was um, two years ago in 2000, and, well, three years now, 2018. We actually hired CBRE. They're the largest real estate marketing firm in the world to help us. They, um, they issued RFPs to 4,000 people on their mailing list. That includes um, real estate developers and investors. And we didn't get anyone that was a serious interest for the site. So just so that you guys know, we've done a lot of RFPs. These are some of the iterations of the sites. And you guys can see that you know, a lot of these were higher, higher density. You can see the building at the top. Like that's a pretty high density building here. So you can see the different iterations of different kind of sketches and plans for this area. This is the one that USF did. We had design charrettes, but you can see how, you know, all of them have the same content in them. They all have residential, commercial, some public space and retail. This was the, the latest one, to, well, the, in 2017, but you can see these are a, a, a densely located buildings. And then this was the last one in 2019 um, where we re-sketched kind of all of the elements. So just the, the underlying theme and the trend is that while, these, the, while the, the puzzle may look different, the puzzle pieces represent the same uses. <laughs> What's it look like today? We have, you know, a historic building, we have open space, we have newer mixed use offices and apartments, we have doctor's offices, and we have other commercial space. And this is some of the transformation that you all can see. Our, on the left is the is the council chamber. Um, this is this is a this is caddy corner from the site across the street. You can see kind of lower density um, mixed use, residential on top, retail on bottom. We have the Galleria, you all are familiar with that site. And we also have hotels in the district. So how do we, how do we take all this and how do we actually activate a, success, a successful downtown, right? So what are those ingredients that we need? We need a sense of place. We've always identified that we wanted an identifiable downtown. That's a continuing theme. And, and something that um, Oldsmar is missing. You know, Tampa Road does not function as our identifiable, identifiable downtown. We have to have a mix of uses. We have to have a catalyst project. What is actually going to spur more private investment? Um, the literature says investment in streetscape. We've already done that. You can see that new lighting, new amenities, new crosswalks, um, new diagonal parking. So all of that creates a, um, an attractive downtown. So what do we think missing right now? It's that catalyst project. We've had a lot of activity, but none of it seems to be um, sustainable on its own. So this, this graphic depicts a, um, a proposal that we now have, um, that we're now considering. So this is a mixed use development. Um, on the top, you can see it's three stories of residential over two stories in height of commercial. You all know the trend that the commercials are getting higher in the height of the, of the commercial. So it's not adequate to have your standard residential height. So, um, so that's the way that the, that the rendering is proposing, this proposal looks for, at this point. And so you can see that it's integrated um, uh, some uh, park spaces, and also to activate the downtown with street festivals. Can you put your cursor on the city hall by chance? Just to show 
Where City Hall is in America? Where oh, City, City Hall is. City Hall is right here next door. Okay. So we're, we're looking at um, a catalyst project. And we want to increase the residential density because in order to have successful downtowns, you need the residential density for your customer base. So here's another view. This is from at Washington and State Street. So you can see that, um, that you can see again, this kind of this three-story residential above two stories of commercial. It's, it's broken up. So if you can see my cursor, it looks like three buildings, but it really would look like, it looks like three buildings, but it's all connected. And there would be um, on the proposals an interior parking garage, they call it that Texas donut design. So you don't see the parking garage from the street. So, so why this location? This location means a lot. Um, the location right next to City Hall, it's in a designated activity center um, through Forward Pinellas. It's also under the countywide rules. So you can see where, where the, um, these blue dots are designated um, activity centers throughout the county. So you can see that right here at our site, at this one is a designated center. Chuck, this is your um, previous question about where is the CRA? This is our CRA. So our current standards right now, so this, it's a long Tampa Road and then 580. And then, so you can see that, that it is this gray area is where we're talking about um, putting in some higher density mixed vertically, we call it vertically mixed use, vertically integrated mixed use development. So in the process right now, um, our zoning codes and our current comp plan does not support a vertically integrated mixed use development at this location. So, so right now the residential development densities allow for 30 units per acre. The, the um, building that, that you just looked at is about 65 units or 60 units per acre. So it also has a, ma a maximum impervious surface, surface ratio of 0.9. That means how much you can build on the site. So that basically is 90% of the site. It has a maximum floor area ratio of two and a maximum height of 75 feet. That means six floors. So right now you can build on, on the site like City Hall, you could have a building that's six stories tall that has um, on five acres, you would have about 200,000 square foot of commercial. And then you could, and you could have um, residential densities of up to 30 units per acre. So that would be our city hall site that we're looking to for a development portion of that's about five. So I think it's, it's important to note that currently you can have um, 150 units per acres on that site, 200,000 square feet of commercial. That's larger than any of the Nielsen buildings, just to put that in perspective. And you can build something six stories tall. So what we're trying to do is encourage residential density instead of the commercial density that's currently allowed, because we wanna create residential traffic downtown. We think that that is a key to a successful downtown. Do you guys have oh, any questions? As yeah, so is the pink and green still part of the CRA or is, or is that different? The pink and green um, is part of the CRA and I have some slides later on, Chuck, that I can show you how the development works okay. um, through yeah. that area. Yeah, then Felicia, Felicia. Oh, I'm yes. sorry. Who was that? Was that Larry? Oh, yeah, Larry, Larry. Larry. Have you guys, um, have you guys considered any type of cultural, cultural expansion? Like, I know that you know you want to create create traffic. Um, well, people like going to the theater. They like going to uh, concerts. They like doing they going to things that that can get their kids involved and stuff like that. And if you think about it, you know Tampa, Safety Harbor, um, uh, Largo, all these places have some type of a cultural um center or whatever that that people can take advantage of yeah absolutely so we have public space that'll be included but also i'm going to talk about site two the library site and we actually have a theater concept as part of that plan cool 
Okay. So we're, we're definitely in tune to the arts here. We've already invested in public art in the streetscape and we're gonna continue those efforts. We recognize that, Larry, and that's a really good point. Hey, to make it Jason. all attraction. Jason, go ahead. Sorry. Um, so if the increased density passes within that area, that's for that entire area, would be allowed that increased density? Yes, correct. But the, in, the, it's important to know that it's it's really, I don't view it as an increase in density because Again, we're just encouraging residential instead of already allowed high density commercial. So it's an increase in the residential density and, and only if it's part of a vertically integrated mixed use building. So it has to have retail on the bottom and commercial on the top, and then only also with a development agreement with the city. And that's how we, we assess all of the impacts. And I'm gonna go through that in a couple minutes about like how do we assess traffic or what does this do to our schools? And so, were time to, sorry, were there any time restrictions on that or anything as well, or is it just the restrictions of having a plan and everything? Time restrictions. I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, how long? How long would it like? Is that for a, a two-year program, or is it? Uh, is that? It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It, it, would in, it would allow the option to have a. Um, to request a, a density bonus in this vertically integrated mixed use building um, for as long as this is in place. So you do have to enter into a development agreement. A development agreement is, um, is a limited term and, and actually I'm gonna address that in a couple minutes too. Okay. Anyone else have any questions as I move forward? Okay, so this is our, this is our um, actual like our text amendment. So what we're, what we're asking is that um, we have the option to have this vertically integrated mixed use development with a development agreement in that area that was marked in gray, um, because we don't have that already. And so we want to, in order to encourage downtown, we wanna be able to have this option that we can offer to, um, for future development. And so why do we want vertically integrated mixed use development? Well, there's lots of reasons. But the, the, it, it started out as a principle really in the 1990s. You guys um, have, you, you guys probably heard of Andre Duani. He developed Seaside in North Florida in celebration. He was like one of the first urban planners to kind of bring this to the forefront. But it, you know, it's new urbanism design. It actually has less impact on your systems than urban sprawl, which our codes um, currently allow. So most codes do. So if you can see this, and we're not picking on Walmart at all, but it's just an example of how our codes um, uh, encourage development like this instead of development like this one on the right. So if you have the compact development, it has um, less impact to even traffic because people in residential buildings that live in buildings like this actually have less cars than people who live in single family units. So it's... This is on um, Tampa Road, which is a uh, transit corridor for Pinellas County. You know, we have uh, PSTA service now. But <coughs> so increasing this residential density um, doesn't adversely affect the use of the other property in the area, but it really attracts a younger affluent population. You guys all intuitively probably know this. Um, it creates additional housing options for our residents. That's, that is a real challenge here in Pinellas County. Um, not having the a available mix of housing for the people who we want to work here. That's one of the, there's two things that um, employers will, will say that they're looking for when they come to a site location. One is talent, availability of a talent for an employment base and then availability of a housing mix for their employees. So um, we don't have that here in Oldsmar. So and everybody, of course, who lives in these developments, they shop here, they spend money here. It reduces costs to maintain our public infrastructure because it's all compact. And it also reduces the environmental footprint um, that is associated with other types of development. And in this case, I think one of the benefits too is that you know, in Oldsmar, um, we have, um, we're vulnerable to, to some natural um, uh, occurrences such as hurricanes and flooding. And this actually elevates some of your residential population out of your flood prone areas. 
So the concentration and diversity of activities, less need to travel, less reliance on cars, more public transportation, more attractive centers, vitality, all these things come with those sorts of developments. These are some of our technical perspective, but you know, these amendments are consistent with the goals and objectives of, a, of our comp plan already. Alicia? Yes. I just wanted to comment on something, just, just kind of for the record. A Commissioner Eggers left a while back uh, only because of some of this information, of course, might come before him. And oh. I just want to make sure everybody knew that he did, in fact, yeah, make he did. before okay. we started getting into the, what we're proposing change wise. <laughs> All that other stuff. So yeah. this is where everybody knew that. Good point. Yeah. Okay. Good. Um, so, so now we can really talk. Now the commissioner's gone. Let's go forward. Okay. <laughs> so um, you know it's consistent with all the goals and our objectives of our current plans. I think that's important to know that while this may seem new to, to some people, it's not. It's already like supported by our planning documents. I think this slide is really interesting, and I know it looks like a big chart, but um, this is this is kind of where the, the county wide rules. So you all know how I'm going to give you a quick zoning primer, but uh, we have a we have a county wide rules say what we can do on any given piece of property in in Pinellas County. So every community has to follow the county wide rules. Can you guys see my hand too, or I'm just moving my hand to myself? <laughs> yeah. We can okay. see it. We can see it. And then, and then you layer on that, and then the city has our own comp plan. Our comp plan still has to follow the countywide rules. And it then looks like you're getting ready to do the Macarena, by the way. Thank you. And then on, on, on one on one more layer is cities have zoning, um, and that's how we <laughs> uses. So it's kind of it's a multi-layer um, uh, regulatory compliance, right? So, so when we start talking about residential density. The countywide rules for an activity center, which we are, um, allows for 90 units per acre. The county wants to, um, through their countywide rules, wants to increase the density in their activity centers. That makes sense by the map that I showed you all, right? And then we've got transient accommodations. Um, that's really hotels, right? At 150 units per acre. And then the intensity is the floor area ratio. And so the countywide rules allow three, and this proposed amendment is still well under um, that those allotments. So we're asking for 65 units per acre, um, 150 units per acre for hotel accommodations, and then a, a two um, FAR instead of a three FAR. So so while while even though our community our um, activity center is a smaller one in the county scale. Um, we're still asking for below the limits of that. And so this slide kind of shows what they have different um, levels of these activity centers. You can see at the top, that's an urban center. You can see that if you go to, um, to the, this, where my cursor is, that would be 200 units per acre. And then it would allow larger hotels at 330. The floor area ratio would be eight. So that would be, St. Petersburg and Clearwater. And then we've got major centers. They have them in Largo. And then our community center is, is a smaller version of that. And we're still not um, even you know, close to the allowable um, density and intensity for what we were asking for. Any questions at this point? Okay, so we're, the amendment that we're asking for is not in conflict with anything from our city. We're trying to redevelop and revitalize our downtown area. And we want to spur development and serve as a catalyst for private investment. And then I think Chuck, you had asked before about the CRA. Um, this is interesting, I think, because this is, it's called a transect model. And it's, and it's the way that communities are, um, are developed in general. So to the left, you have like natural zones. For us, that would be like Arields Park and properties. And then you get a little more dense and intense as you move to the right, right? So it allows a natural buffer um, for the zoning. So you can see this is single family houses. And then the third would be a suburban zone, which was a smaller scale, um, uh, you know, 
uh, multifamily and, and duplexes and those sorts of things. And then we've got a general urban zone and then kind of an urban center, which would be our version of the highest density we would allow. An urban core zone isn't even relative to us, but you can see um, the along Tampa Road would look kind of like a T5. And then, and then across the street where the chamber building is on the south side of State Street, you're more of a T4. And then you move into the zones as you move further to the water. And, and now that you guys know about a transect model, you'll see that in all communities pretty much. So we've been asked questions by the public about, you know, does the city have adequate um, infrastructure to serve this? So we, we do. And so we have adequate um, water supply. Um, we're only, our, our water, um, we can, we're only at 75% of our capacity in the provision of, of potable water supply. So, and we have room to go, grow if we have to. And then we have um, adequate sewer facilities. Um, we're also, we're, I think we're less than that. We're like at 67% um, of our, um, of what we're allowed. Do we have adequate public facilities like schools and parks and libraries? Those are all good questions to ask when a community is looking at redeveloping. And the answer is yes. Um, we have capacity. We only have two elementary schools and we have capacity at both of those. And then if you look at from an aerial view, you can see where we're looking at um, a higher um, density um, in, this, in this area. And this is along Tampa Road, just to sort of give you what that half a mile and the um, a quarter mile looks like and where that would put you. So Chuck, when we talked about like, you could see where it gets sort of more natural area and then you can see as it progresses to where this location would be. So this is a, um, some of the current ones, some of these properties that were, were you know, that that this new kind of bonus would apply to are already developed and they're new. So we don't see those turning over anytime soon, you know, from, from already kind of having commercial retail. And we talked about that, you know, it's on a, um, it's on a designated regional. Corridors. So you can see these green right here. So this is 580 and this is Tampa Road. And so we're, this site is at that intersection. These are heavily traveled corridors. We have over 60,000 um, trips per day on Tampa Road and um, we have access to transit. Just to put that in perspective, like Gulf de Bay has less. Um, <coughs> I found that interesting when I first came up to the And then Please so, but show. every time that- Hold on. Sorry about that. Sam, if you're on there, but you got a, you got a hot mic. We can hear you flipping through everything and the sniffles. Okay, so, oh, Sam heard us, I guess. Okay, <laughs> so um, at each time, though, every time there's a development, it requires a development agreement for any sort of bon bonus um, density. And at that time, they would be required to do a traffic impact analysis. So Every development coming forward that wants to take advantage of this one. Now, if they take advantage of just the commercial density instead of the residential density, um, they don't have to have a development agreement at this point. So, you know, this amendment doesn't deter any improvement or development of any other property in the area. Alicia, can I yes. ask a question? Yeah, this is Larry again. Are you guys still are you guys still encouraging small business or are you more trying to aim towards bringing in larger companies like Nielsen and, you know, Advent Health and, you know, people like that. What's that plan? Because you've got that Douglas Road area where there's a lot of small businesses and such that are back there. Well, the, the small businesses are the largest market segment of our economy. So, and of course we want both, right? So, um, you know, the county is encouraging small businesses. We encourage businesses through other programs um, we have a qualified tax incentive program for people bringing businesses to our community. So I, I'm, I'm going to say, Larry, both. We encourage both. Okay. Um, the, this, these are smaller retail spaces. So um, at the, in, in this area, we would like to see, you know, pedestrian activity, which is associated with smaller commercial and retail. Okay. In the downtown core. 
Felicia, if I could just kind of add to that, Larry. Uh, the area that Felicia pointed out between the anchor property, uh, as mm -hmm. we're calling it, next to City Hall, going mm -hmm. down to State Street and turning right on St. Pete Drive over towards the, air, uh, the airport, over by the uh, library. Mm -hmm. uh, there are multiple other activities already going on, uh, proposed new developments, not developments, new, new projects, I should say. And some of it's new development, but they're small. And interestingly enough, uh, they're all local people who are, are proposing them, a local investors. And so we we believe that uh, based on the initial before there is even an approved project next to City Hall, it's already having the effect that we hope where more local businesses, uh, local citizens will uh, invest and start some additional small businesses. This is an FYI. Yeah, no, that's excellent. That's excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Just the um, um, just the knowing that the city has been contemplating the, these sorts of changes with these sorts of development has already spurred um, local investment for sure. We're definitely seeing an uptick. So in this, you know, the amendment will not deter um, the improvement or development of other property in the area. We're hoping that it's a catalyst. Um, so Thank you. Thank you. Plan amendments, if you guys thought that this is kind of complicated, I think it is, if you're not in our business, right? Um, uh, comp plan amendments are very complicated. So I, I just wanted to share some steps with, with that and what that requires. So, um, you know, for, for us, we're amended our land development code and our comp plan to, to encourage this sort of development in this particular area of Oldsmar. And so um, the comp plan amendment has been considered by the planning board. Um, then it went to the city council for their consideration of the ordinance. Um, it went to the council first reading of the ordinance. At all three steps, there's public participation. Uh, we then have to take it to um, forward Pinellas. So they are our um, county planning authority. So we submitted our application yesterday. Uh, we hope that we're going to make the October 4th meeting. Um, at the Forward Pinellas Planners Advisory Committee. So the technical planners, we were a member of that committee, but it's planners from every municipality that sits on that committee. They review the proposal and then, um, and they consider it. And then it goes to the Forward Pinellas Board on October the 13th. And then it goes to the Board of County Commissioners where they consider it in November, if all goes well. Um, then it'll come back to the city council for another public hearing and another second reading. Then we have to submit it to the state of Florida. So has anyone seen a, a, a regulatory process that it has more steps than this? Anyone? Okay. <laughs> so, so it's good because it gets vetted by a lot of people. We take, we take these um, considerations extremely uh, seriously. And so um, in the planning world, that is why that there's all these steps. We, um, we want smart growth in the state of Florida, obviously. So in addition to all of those steps and those public reviews, it gets reviewed by um, various state agencies and jurisdictions. So it gets reviewed by um, the Southwest Florida Water Management District, SWIFMUD is what we call that, the Department of Transportation, the Department of Environmental Protection, the Department of State, the Department of Education. So all of the state authorities weigh in on um, their, their portions of what they review as, as it relates to the, to the impacts that may be incurred for higher density. Um, we did receive a letter already from the Department of Transportation um, just saying that, um, you know, that, that we, any of the future development would require you know, transportation impact. So we will do the traffic impact as the developments come online. Okay, this next slide I left blank because I wanted to um, show you all the proposals for the second site at the library. So I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment and then pull up that one. Any questions? No, I, and I'll just, I wanna make a, a general comment because I've been in a lot of the meetings and um, the comment has been in reference to the 60, 65,000 cars a day that travel down Tampa Road and that just by virtue of that happening that people will stop. And I think Mayor Seidel would agree that 
that isn't necessarily the case. And Tom, oh, he was here. Tom Price from uh, the Oldsmar Tap House is here, and and there are nights when you know there people aren't coming off of Tampa Road. I live behind uh, Rumba or not Rumba, um, Salt Rock, and the new uh, Great Catch um, that has commercial space above it. And so when I go home, I don't turn into my neighborhood. I turn through between the two. And almost every night, except Friday and Saturday night, there are maybe five or six people at Great Catch and eight people maybe at Salt Rock. So just to, to reemphasize that um, the residential component, I think, is really the key to, to our area down here to set it apart because people aren't pulling off of Tampa Road, even though they're out there. So and, and the office space above it, they all go home at five o'clock. So. Anyway, I just thought I would add that while you're changing slides. Yeah. Hey, Felicia. Sorry, Doug. Hey, Felicia. Yeah, no, hey. James over at Chi-Chi's with Adriana, one of our fourth grade students. Say hi, Adriana. Hi. Hi. Hi, Adriana. So we're doing one of our shadow programs today. I had a question for you. I'm sure you guys are aware, but have you been over and checked out the Midtown Tampa um, multi-use facility over there in West Shore? I actually was just there last week. And okay. so I, I encourage everyone to go over there. Has yeah. anyone else been there in this room? I, it's almost exactly what we're looking at. Right. I think and we should plan a field trip or something with the chamber, Doug, at some point. Sure, let's yeah, the, do that. The buildings are a little larger, so they're about seven stories tall. Um, but I think it's a very successful project. And and as James said, it, it, it looks... Um, really like what we're aiming to build here. And they have parking garages in the center. So it's like a donut design. Um, one of their, um, their leading um, catalyst projects there is, I don't know how to say this, N-O-V-E-L. It's either novel or novel or, but their, their main, uh, one of their features has about 390 units. And I believe that it's surrounding more than a thousand car parking garage. So. Um, I, I went and I toured on foot just to get a feeling for it. And, and you don't even know that you're next to such a large facility as a pedestrian. So yes, James, I think that that's a great idea. Okay, cool. Thank you. Felicia, Felicia you mentioned that CBRE uh, solicited 300 plus or whatever uh, developers, but didn't really get a whole lot of traction. Why do you think that's the case? Did they give you any idea? Did they give you any feedback? Um, I, I, I think there was a couple, of, a couple of things that may have been driven it. One may have been um, some associated uh, fees from a real estate company, but also, um, you know, most of this is market driven. So you actually have to have a market for what you're planning. So the, the other ones didn't show such a great commercial component. And so, you know, that's where the market is, is to create, um, you know, downtown, uh, successful downtowns all have a, a large, a, a large uh, residential component instead of commercial. So I, I, I don't, well, to speculate is difficult, but well, that would be- it, let, me, let me add to that just a little bit, Felicia, if I can, because I was on council at the time, and I think uh, I think Doug was as well. But I I believe, and I've I've been part of this project multiple times and watched it come and go. And and I really believe that um, a key component that has always prevented this project from being successful has been the lack of uh, the lack of density availability to make the project financially viable. Yeah. And so I think that people who looked at the project looked at what the limits were and said, no, thank you. It, it, it doesn't work. I was talking to someone who is uh, a mixed use developer uh, and, and, and does multiple projects, well known. And he said to me, he said, oh, my goodness, I, I don't even look at with the cost of development today. I don't even look at any project that has less than 100 <laughs> units an acre. I just don't, you can't make, it doesn't make sense financially, uh, especially if you're talking about by, uh, building a parking structure, which has always been the real uh, Achilles heel of the project uh, because it would require the city in most cases to go through a bond issuance, which is what we would normally have to do unless we have 
higher density in the negotiate room. So I believe that's the reason why it's always, uh, I believe in particular with uh, CBRE, I think that was the biggest issue. Mm. Okay, interesting. Yeah, those are great points because usually, right, a developer won't um, spend time doing even site plans without knowing they're gonna have the density. And so, and so you all just, just in context, you know, this building, um, when it was initially contemplated was about $70 million. So um, just to get through the plans and permitting is running about 12% of that. So, you know, you're looking at about $8 million just to get us through the plans and permitting section. So they, the developers, like what the mayor said, want to make sure that they have the density in place before they, um, you know, spend a lot of money to, to get rolling. So this is, this is from the initial um, proposal from Woodfield. We do have a proposal right now that we are negotiating with the developer. So this is just a rendering. I brought this one up because what, um, what James had talked about, you guys can see where this is a parking garage up at the top. And then this is all wraparound units. So I have a couple more. So this this is all this is City Hall here. This has now been increased. We're going. We have plans to get rid of this parking lot, and so this would be all green space, about two acres of land here, just to retain for park activities. And Larry, as you had alluded to, having a um, place for people to gather is extremely important in downtown. So we'll have, you know, a um, we're hoping to have a, a an interactive fountain that will be a showcase feature. Um, from Tampa Road, so you'll be able to see it. Um, it will be a, like a dancing fountain to music, um, which no one else has in Pinellas County yet. So we're hoping to be the first one and then they'll have a stage area and places for festivals. And let me see if I can show you another couple. And this is an aerial view of that. Um, the design as it is currently standing, it looks like these are the wraparound features, but it breaks up the building along State Street can you guys see this? And different from uh, Midtown would be that ours, ours is um, instead of having um, five stories straight up or seven stories kind of straight up like this, our step, step backs. And so the residential component is pushed back off the street. So it really looks like a two-story building from the street with a three-story building behind it. And I wanted to share, um, oh, and here, Hang on. I'm going to share the, the presentation that was given by um, John Buse and Devin Rushnell in April. You can see that this is dated um, for the downtown theater district. And we lost it. And so um, this one is the property next to the library. And so this is a, an, a, a, an initial site layout of what it could look like. So we're looking at adding, at, at this point, of around 82 townhomes to give, again, the, to encourage the housing mix because that's so important. So we'll have you know, residential uh, luxury, luxury apartment units and then um, townhomes. But um, Larry, to yours, this development includes a, a theater and this one was, it's not designed yet, so I don't know if it'll look like this at the end, but the initial um, concept shows that a theater would be next to the library, which is to the right here, and it would sort of mimic the Mediterranean architectural features of the library. It would be a small black box theater. Um, we're looking, have you all been to um, uh, Ruth Eckerd Hall to the Murray Theater? Yep. Anyone yep. in there? Yep, yep. Yeah, Absolutely. so we're looking we're looking at something like that, that would be a multiple use facility um, that we could have all sorts of different things from, uh, you know, conferences and meetings to, um, to theater, but you're talking about it not probably having a stage, but more multi-use um, for all sorts of different activities. And that's this fine, is, because, and that's fine because you can, there's portable things that you can trans you can you transition that thing to make it whatever the heck you want, as long as you got the square footage. Yeah, that's what we're looking at. And we looked at the Murray, it's um, it's a little less than uh, 5,000 square feet. 
This mm -hmm. building contemplates as the scale model is about 6,500 square feet to give us kind of the back of the house facilities um, that the Murray uh, uses the main hall for their, for their uh, supporting facilities. We would have to incorporate that into the building. So we really wanted a multiple and as you said, a cultural attraction. And then I'm gonna just flip through these quickly, but you can see um, upgrades to the streetscape. You can see 20 foot sidewalks to encourage sidewalk cafes and pedestrian activity. Um, these units on the front are called live work units. And so the townhouse would be owned by a single owner, but they could rent out the front unit um, for, uh, for lower impact retail commercial activity. So you can see how the renderings would look from the street. And then at this corner, this is at um, State Street and St. Petersburg Drive. There would be some sort of plaza area that would be you know, for um, public use and then upgraded um, for a piece for public art and upgraded streetscape again to really give that anchor on, on that side of the street and to um, encourage vibrant activity. Okay, can you guys see my screen now or? Oh, you can see oh. You. And so I wanted to share the development agreement process. <clears throat> Again, we have, we have, you know, these technical amendments that we have to um, get approved to move forward with a building such as the Woodfield development one, but each of these agreements each of these proposals come with a development agreement. And so that development agreement process is outlined in our land development code. So there are a lot of, um, of steps to that. I just wanted to quickly um, tell you all what those steps were, is that you, know, you have to have a written request from a developer to enter into a development agreement. Then the city manager puts it on the council agenda, which we've already done for both of these projects to pursue negotiations. And then the city council tells the city manager to um, proceed in negotiations and the property owner submits a development proposal. Um, this is where we are right now. We're in the process of negotiation. So we're, we're still at the infancy of the development agreement process. Um, we review the proposals, we negotiate the terms. Um, if we reach an agreement, we bring those terms back to the city council. Um, uh, an outline form, the city council then directs our city attorney to make all of the um, associated documents. And then we have a development agreement. That development agreement goes back to our planning board. Um, they review it, they make a recommendation to the city council. At that point, the city council has to have two public hearings um, for it, we notify everyone within 200 feet of the property, and then we get a development agreement. And then, then we also have to record it at the state level. So it takes quite a while. There's also a lot of places for public input in that process. So I counted about seven places that the public can come and speak about each development agreement as it comes forward. So then, you know, how can you participate? Well, we have set up a, um, a website called downtownoldsmar.com. So you can um, uh, submit your comment through then, or you can also, and I encourage everyone to come to one of the public forums, whether it's a public meeting or a public hearing um, to, to give your input for the project. Okay, that's the end of my presentation. Do you guys have any questions? Just incredible. Who said that? That was Chuck. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lengthy process for sure, but um, you know we're we're progressing through it, and it's taken the, the city really a couple of decades, I think, Mayor, right, to get to this point. Yeah, it's taken us quite a while and quite a few city councils. Hey, Felicia, this has been some, as you know, this is already spring, also in the green area, in the residential area. I'm evidence of people investing close by. And you had made me aware of that the CRA impacts those homeowners also, and I'm interested in helping get the word message out about that. Maybe you could just touch on the paint up, fix up, whatever the 
proper term is for that. All right. So, so as part of the the CRA, you know, um, we offer a paint up fix up program for our residential properties. So you can, um, for exterior improvements to your property, all you have to do is come talk to us and say you want a thousand dollars, and then you have to show us receipts that you spent it for your has to be matched to. So you have to put in your thousand, we put in a thousand, you show us receipts, we cut you a check. So it's pretty simple, but it's really to help encourage people to, um, to fix up their houses in the CRA close to these projects. To dramatically drive up the property values of the residential area yeah, it's, surrounding this. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you uh, the first, we really, we've had one public hearing on it, but we've really kind of had two, but we had, you know how government works where you, you have a meeting to decide if you're going to have a meeting, right? <laughs> and, you know, that's kind of the way something gets on the agenda. So we had the meeting to discuss whether we're going to hold a public hearing. And both of them, essentially, we as a council treated them, you know, kind of uh, as public, the first one as a public hearing and allowed everybody to speak. Uh, we changed our rules and suspended our rules so everyone had time to speak. Uh, but just as a point of interest for those who are wondering what's the feedback like, uh, you have uh, a group who live very close to our concern, as, as you would imagine. Uh, what it does is, it, you know, going to create a lot of traffic. Is it going to uh, have a negative impact on the value of my home? Uh, is allowing that kind of change right there going to take away from the charm of Oldsmar. Um, and then you have the other group who says, you know, the city's been spending taxpayers' <laughs> dollars buying up this land over the last 20 years. Uh, they've taken all this off the tax roll. We've been promised to downtown. It's time to move forward. We need this. Uh, you know, and, and so there were more people speaking in favor of it as opposed to it. Um, if you're keeping track of that kind of thing, you know, uh, but uh, I think that while we go through this process, we attempt to address those concerns of the people who live nearby. Uh, you know, all of our analysis have shown if you take a look at Safety Harbor or Dunedin, um, whether this is important to one or not, but it's just kind of research, and that is that as those downtowns developed out, those properties closest, uh, they, they had the biggest windfall in terms of growth and, and value. Uh, it was never, I've not seen a situation where someone lost value. It's, uh, you know, 20% increases, I mean, it's crazy. And um, so, I mean, that's kind of where we're at in terms of where the community sits. Uh, I, if you're in favor of this or you want to speak on this, as a business owner here, I would encourage you to come out. We had a lot of business owners who came out and spoke about the importance of, uh, you know, having more citizens here. And uh, it's been a real positive experience, I think, overall. And uh, so we've got still some, some lifting to do, but um, in, in the development project that Felicia showed, as she said, we, you know, we're, it's not a final deal with them by no means. Um, but I, I will come to the de density issue and to the point that the question that Larry asked earlier, uh, going beyond uh, CBRE in terms of why have, have, didn't we get any feedback from there? And I'll say, expand that as to why it hasn't happened. We need this density change because I'm convinced, uh, and I think a lot of others are, that if in fact that sees its whole way through, regardless of what happens with Woodfield, which I would hope, I think they are the right ones for us at this point, we'll see. Uh, if, it, if they turn out not to be the right ones financially, there will be others. Because I can tell you, I've already heard from a couple other groups uh, who are interested and I'm like, <laughs> sit back, hold the phone, let us work on what we're working on. Uh, so in any event, that's just kind of a, I don't know if it's a behind the scenes look, but it's just kind of from the mayor's perspective of how this is progressing. But uh, it's very different from what we've gone through in the past where it's gonna start, stop and fail. It's a very different process. And the council as a whole is uh, really committed, uh, it appears, to go do the heavy lifting to, to get us there this time. So for what it's worth, from the for what it's worth 
the file. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think at, at many of the meetings, the, the comment has been, you know, uh, just leave it alone and, you know, let's make it another park. And, and I think the fact that the city over time and mayor has alluded to it that, you know, that we had the foresight 20 years ago to start purchasing this property gives us the control to some extent, you know, the economy dictates that part of it, but something's going on that property. And the fact that the city owns it, we have a, 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 some control of that. But if that doesn't happen, and I don't know that I'm, this is my opinion, that the city would wind up selling the property and recouping what they put into it. And then what whoever buys it would put whatever it's zoned for on that property. So something is, is gonna go on it. And I think we're positioned right now to, to really drive, you know, drive the train. So, um, at any rate. Nice job, Felicia. Thank any you, sorry about the technical difficulties. No, we're good. <laughs> any other comments? I want, I want, yep, I'd like to make a, a quick comment. So, uh, first of all, Sean Swagger, Berkshire Hathaway Real Estate, uh, city of Oldsmar resident. Um, I'm an advocate for this project. I've been following closely for, for some time now. Um, you know, I'd say the biggest concern I have, um, is, is traffic. And I know that's going to be part of the studies. Um, but what I mean by traffic is, um, the, the, um, the tenants in the apartment complexes that are going to be going in and out of, of their the parking garage and whatnot. If you've ever traveled, eastbound on on tampa road and tried to merge and and turn right onto washington there it's a it's a challenge so i'd say most of the traffic's going to be uh directed down st pete drive and up up state street um it's just kind of what i'm i'm seeing happening um and i know that'll be part of the studies but just uh kind of you know looking out in the future um but really the biggest question i have is let's say everything goes to plan as is now um oh sorry i had a call coming in um can you still hear me yep yep okay so best case scenario uh everything's moving forward with woodfield etc when can i drive my golf cart to downtown and enjoy a beer or coffee or whatever hey, that's, my, that's a my great question. you can you can do it now at tap house but i i do yeah, you're doing smoke chicken wing tonight, so that be there. <laughs> That's a good question for Felicia. When we get that so, thing uh, I never like to commit to this question, Sean. By the way, <laughs> but hey, plus or minus uh, a year is okay. My uh, my my experience tells me, uh, in um, in turn, uh, just that I always think that it takes a year to design something and get it through the permitting process of this kind of scope. And then it's going to take them, the bigger the, the structure is, the longer it's going to take to build. So maybe, you know, one to two years to build it. And then in this world of uncertainty, I, I'm not sure what that looks like. You know, it, and at this point, too, um, you know, the, the density is not there yet. So the, the, the step one for the design, you know, we, uh, a developer, um, you know, how much money are they going to willing to invest in something that's a maybe. So if we go through the process and you're talking, a, you know, a year after that, just to design and get it through permitting. So we're, I would say three, three years out. So let least. me answer that question. As mayor. <laughs> I have a much better answer. Uh, you know, you know, things are being done somewhat in parallel. So it's, it, you know, it's not like density passes and then we start, right? So a lot of the negotiations and so forth have been ongoing uh, to as far as they can go. Um, and, and so I think what you will end up seeing is that, I, I, in my opinion, I think it's probably two years. Clearly, I believe within a year and a half, if we're not out there turning dirt, then I don't think we're, uh, I, I can't believe we wouldn't be within a year and a half out there with shovels with with hard hats on right felicia <laughs> as new city manager i'm not i'm not i'm not an expert at this stuff but is there any any um it's almost like a build it and they will come type of a, 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 a attitude is there any way to build in incentives to these developers 
that as the project progresses that they see a carrot at the end of the at the end of the at the end of the line that that kind of um, incentivizes them to to be more uh, you know tied in committed to what what we're trying to accomplish yeah so the, our development agreement process will will pin down a schedule for them so they'll have to meet the terms of the development agreement um, so, you know, that's still, we're negotiating, um, on those points, but if, if that's what you're talking about is to get them expediting the process, we do that through the, the legal, um, uh, method to do that is through the development agreement. That's not, not exactly because that's, that's uh, like, okay, if you don't do this, then you're going to be, you know, you're going to be out on your ear or your whatever, but I'm, I'm talking about more, is there a way to, 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 to give them something you know provide some type of incentive for them to be more creative to be more uh innovative to be more um uh in touch kind of buying into the concept to to uh to to, to for them to just treat it differently than just oh it's a, just another development project type of a thing you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if that's possible in something like this or not, but, you know. One of their, one of their greatest incentives that's happening now is the cost of construction. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. so they're naturally kind of on fire to get this done because the construction costs, as, any, as the time ticks by, their construction costs are going up and their performa and the right. amount of money they're going to make is diminishing. So in, intuitively, the, our developers are very, um, the, the two developers that we're working currently with in negotiations are very aggressive to get the project done. So they're, they're trying to stream, they're trying to move as fast as they can. And so, and we're trying to move through the process as fast as we can too. So, so we're, um, we're working with the, the state to get an expedited review, because again, it goes back to having the density in place for them. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and one other thing that I should have commented on to Sean, and I think Sean had to get off the call, but for others, uh, when we gave those timelines, I think that's really relevant to the Woodfield project, uh, the City Hall project, rather than the library project, the theater district. I believe the theater district, because it has, a, a, it, it fits within the current zoning, and uh, there, I think there's some small minor uh, uh, variances that might have to be considered, but they're they're minor and they're local, and uh, so I think that that project is a lot sooner uh, as compared to the much larger project next to City Hall. Just as and that problem. will attract people. That will attract yeah. people. Yeah, I think that you're will right. Drive your residents. Yeah, I think you're right, Larry. And, and you know, uh, activity builds activity and motivates people. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And as the developer of the library project or the theater district project has already had inquiries from people looking to uh, put reservations or deposits or whatever you want to call it on there. So, uh, and that, I think that process is forthcoming fairly soon to be at least on an email list or some kind of a, a database to keep people that are interested informed on that area. And, and, and yes, I agree. And they're also doing all of their regulatory discovery right now to get through all the regulatory agencies on to vet a site plan that it will work. So I, I agree, they'll be moving much faster. Hey, Felicia, I had a question for you. Did you say it was uh, $8 million for the permits? Um, I'm sorry, I didn't have my calculator in front of me. What's What's... What's well? What's twelve percent of of seventy million at a base? Yeah, is, that, is that like a negotiated price or? That no, that's just what it costs for the civil engineering design and and permitting from environmental. So that's all encompassing. But you think that's a pretty large spend, right? right. For for someone, so it's that's the industry standard. Is that whatever whatever your construction project is, it's going to take you twelve percent to um, to get there. Wow. Even just to the plans part. Don't you know someone, yeah. that, someone that can give you 10% off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the biggest part of that probably is design. It's the civil engineering and design. And the architect, do you think about all of those professional services you need to actually get a building? 
And in the interest of time, I know Mayor Seidel has to run. Uh, he's got to pack his cooler for the kickoff of the football season tonight. So um, <laughs> I appreciate it. I did record this. Um, and I think, it, and I'll talk to the mayor and soon to be city manager, but I think this would be something that we want to do probably, you know, maybe in six months or as progress is made that, that we kind of keep this updated forum going. So anything, any closing comments, Mayor? Nope. Just uh, thank you for being here. And Appreciate the chamber for all the good work they do. Thank you, Felicia. Nice presentation. And we'll see you at 11. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, here's that. Yeah. Thank you, Felicia. Goodbye, Felicia. Bye, Felicia. Yeah. Bye Doug. <laughs>